All right, I got 305. Why did I get 305? Well, that's 30, and that's 5. All right, the column as it is right now is getting treated as text. So that's okay. We just need to find the numeric value of that text field. All right, so what I need is the value of this guy, V-A-L. All right, V-A-L in parentheses around this one plus the V-A-L, the value of that guy. It basically takes a string, a text string, and converts it into a numeric value. All right, or you could use C int, which is a convert to an integer, but this should work just fine. There's 35. All right, 30 for that one, and 5 for that one. Now, something else weird happens. Watch this. Let's go to another one. That's 20. That's correct. And now I have an error. Why am I getting an error? Well, because these have no value. All right, it's null. So if I convert these over to actual values, now I get a 25. But that's no good. All right, I want to actually see a zero value in there if, if, it's, if it's blank. So now I'm going to introduce you to another function called nz. It says null zero, nz. So i got to take this guy here and say nz that stuff. So if the value is null, convert it to zero. Right, right in here, nz. And yes, I cover all these functions in my access classes. There we go. So now, the value of nz, this guy, which if this is null, it's going to bring a zero in here. And now let's see if it works. Let's save it and go back to form view. 35, 20, 25, 0. See that? These have no value in them, so it evaluated to 0. If I pick a 30 here, now we got just 30. Okay, now all I have to do is add in the other two fields in here, which is not hard to do at all. All right, just to copy all this stuff, actually. Actually, I'll just copy one of them. Copy and paste, and we need cat. What's the next one here? Market and timing, right? Cat market plus cat timing. All right, it's a little little long. That's okay. Save it and let's take a look. There we go. Eighty-five. 40, and I'm guessing that's right. Let's see, 20, 10, and 10. Yep, the math is good. 25, and 30. Now, this value is not stored in the table, but that's okay, because you can always recalculate it if you want to later. You can use that technique in your forms and in your reports to generate that number there, that, that uh, number of points. Now, if you decide you want to store that value, it's not incredibly hard to do that. However, it does involve a little bit of programming, just a tiny bit. Now, I'm going to show you that real quick just because you might want to do it that way. All right, if you need to be able to come in here and manually edit this, then I'll show you how to do it so you can store that value. Because right now, this is a, a, a what's called a, an unbound value. Okay, it's not bound to anything in the table. It's just calculated. All right, but with a tiny bit of programming, you can store that value in the table using an event. And again, access 300 stuff. I'll save this one as it is, though, and just copy and paste it so that you have the other one. I'm going to send you this database as well. All right, project F2. And what I'll do is in my project table, all right, let's design the project table. I'll add in a field down here for points. Let's call this points. And this will be a number. Okay, which it won't matter if we have this in the table or not, in this one here for the other example. All right, so the points can be stored in the table now. Now in Project F2, Design View, okay, instead of calculating these points, I'll get rid of this, right, and I'll drop a bound box down in here, right, drop that here, open it up now, and we'll make this guy points, okay. So that's actually bound to the table now. All right, points. Put the label on there. Now what we have to do is we have to actually set this value when these guys are, are edited or updated. Okay, which means if you have any records that you import, you're going to have to make sure you, you set this value yourself manually. And the way we're going to do that is by saying when this value changes, update this. 
okay? So for each of these boxes here, you're going to have to have an after update event. All right, open up the properties for the box, go to event, go to after update event, click on the little builder button over here, and pick code builder. That'll open up the VBA window. All right, I'm in cat size combo after update, which means after that combo box is updated, do some stuff. All right, now, so I don't have to have the same code in four different places, or in your case, 40 different places. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make my own little sub up here. I'm going to say private sub. Let's just call it um, calculate points. All right, and everything that happens inside this calculate points sub, I'm going to run when my combo boxes are updated. All right, I'm going to say points equals zero. All right, points equals points plus the value of nz cat size dot column two. Okay, so points is zero. Add in the points for the cat size. What are the other combos here? I can't remember what they were. Well, we got location, market, and timing. Okay, so just copy these. Copy, paste, paste. All right, cat location. Cat timing, and what was the fourth one? Market, cat market, All right? Paste, cat market. All right, start at zero and then add up the other boxes. And we'll do this each time a box is clicked on. So down here in cat size combo after update, all I need to say is calculate points. And this will run all this. So each time the boxes are updated, it'll run that procedure. Okay. This is, again, a little, little event programming. I cover this in my Access 300 series. You need to do this for each one of the boxes. All right, and just basically just paste it in there. Calculate points. Okay. So that every time our user updates a value, it recalculates the stuff for us. All right, so do this for each of the four boxes. Same thing. After update, go to builder, and paste. All right, let's save this and see if it works now. All right, update my project F2. Now remember, this is started off as zero, so let's we got to change one of these. Whoop. I got a compile error. I goofed. It's cat size combo. My bad. I should have put combo in here. All right, copy and paste. That's the combo box. Whoops, that I missed. Combo dot column. Okay, let's try it again. See, even I goof up sometimes. Change one of these. Medium, and it added them all up. See, all you gotta do is change one of them and it recalculates everybody. Alright, Los Angeles is 5. Government, let's see, is now 10. Educational, 65. And 10. See that? 10, 5, and 35. Looks good. So if you have existing records, you'll have to go through here and do this once. But once it's built, you want to do this again. Okay. Now the benefit of this method is this points is actually stored in the table as opposed to just being calculated on the fly. Both have their benefits. Again, if you need to be able to just come in here manually and type in 300, then this solution will do that for you. All right. If you don't ever have to do that, you can use the other solution where it simply adds them up on the fly. I figured I'd show you both. It's a little tiny bit of programming, but also you can see how a little tiny bit of programming can really help make your project more powerful. If you have questions that you'd like to see answered, come to accesslearningzone.com and go to the tech help section and I'll be happy to answer your questions for you. For more sample videos just like this one, again visit accesslearningzone.com. YouTube viewers, be sure to stop by my website at accesslearningzone.com slash YouTube. You'll get access to my free 90-minute Access 101 tutorial. You can watch the whole thing for free right on my website. You also get a huge discount on any of my other tutorials should you decide to purchase them. Again, that's accesslearningzone.com slash YouTube. And be sure to subscribe to my channel if you like my tutorials. And tell your friends.